we're going to download and install the MetaTrader 4 charts onto your computer. I'll show you the entire process. And from there, after they're installed, I'll show you how to use MetaTrader 4. Now, this is the MetaTrader4.com homepage. We used to be able to get our MetaTrader 4 charts from this page, but we can't do that anymore. There is an option for it, but if you download it from here, they will only send you MetaTrader 5. We have to download the MetaTrader 4 from a broker. Now, I'm going to use IG Forex for this example. I have no affiliation to them. I just know that they're an American broker that will take everybody. So if you are an American trader, you won't be able to sign up to a non-American broker. Non-American traders can sign up to American brokers. So again, for this example, we're going to use an American broker. And IG Forex is one that I don't have. So using IG Forex as an example is going to allow us to do this right from scratch. So I'm going to go to Google and I'm just going to type in IG Forex and just click search. And at the very top, what we're looking for is IG.com. Very simple, very straightforward. And once we get to the IG.com website, what we're looking for is the MetaTrader 4 platform. If you start here, and create a demo account, likely they're gonna send you their own version of their charting software. But we're looking for MetaTrader 4 specifically. So we're gonna to go to trading platforms and click on MetaTrader 4. And we get to this MetaTrader 4 specific page. And what we want is a demo account. So we'll click on create MT4 demo account. And we have this form to fill out. So we're going to fill out this form. They're going to want your first name, last name, email address, phone number. And then from here, would you like to receive messages from them? It's important that you use your actual email address in this one because they are going to send you the MetaTrader 4 download link. You're not going to get it directly from here. They're going to send you the link and then you're going to download it from the email. So I'm going to fill this out. And then once I do, I'll click on the sign up for your demo and it'll take us to a thank you page. So you're not going to see me fill this out, but you can do that on your own. So now we've been taken to the success page. Now, as far as that previous page, I have never once in all my years signing up for MT4 got a phone call from them. So I have no fear about giving them my phone number just in case you were wondering. So now I'm going to go to my email and open up the email that they sent. Now with the IG Forex, it usually takes a few minutes to get the email. So don't panic if you don't get it right away. It can take up to about five minutes for you to get that email. So I'm in my email now, and this is the email that they send. It's from IG, your MT4 demo account. So I'm going to click this link to open it up. And what they send you are the complete instructions to downloading and installing this MT4 platform. Now, what I've noticed is when I click on this download and install the MT4, it's supposed to give you an EXE file. And when I click it, nothing happens. I don't actually get that EXE file. So if this is something that happens to you, the workaround that I've discovered is if I right click, and then copy link address and then paste it into the address bar it will download that file for me it's an ig4 setup.exe file so i'm going to minimize my browser now and i'm going to find this on my desktop and i'm going to run it so this is the ig4 setup.exe file I'm just going to double click to run i'll choose run and then yes and now i have the installation wizard so i'll click next from here, it's going to install a platform onto my computer. Once it's finished installing, you're going to get this finish button. Click this. And after a couple seconds, it will launch your MT4 terminal. So this is the MT4 chart, but we're not done yet. We still have one more step to do. So I'm going to close this window and this window. And what we'll do is open a new account. So under file, We'll choose open an account and from here we'll make sure that the ig demo is selected and click next we're going to get this window where it asks for the login and password of an existing trade account we don't have that we want the new demo account it is selected by default so we'll just click next so now we have this open account personal details so we'll fill in the name the email the phone number and then make sure you click i agree to subscribe to your newsletter and click next i'm going to do that now you won't see me fill this in, but I will click next and we'll get to the next page. And we have a new demo account. And if you'll notice at the bottom right here, we have no connection. If we give it a moment after we click finish, it will connect. So right now, this is your login. This is your password. 
This is the information that you're going to need to log into your account if you get logged out. This investor password is for other people. If you want somebody to take a look at your trading account without being able to actually do anything to your trading account, you give them the login and the investor password and they'll be able to log in and see what you're doing, but they can't actually do anything about it. If you have the login and the actual password, which is what you will have, you can place trades and modify and do whatever it is that you want to do. So I'll click finish. And this bottom right where it says no connection will turn green. And now we have a connection. So at this point, we have fully functional working MT4 charts. So at this point, what I'm going to do is close every single window so that we can start everything right from scratch. We're going to start with a blank canvas. So I'm going to just click all of the X's in all the corners, and I'm going to get rid of all of these different features. So get rid of the charts. And I'll get rid of this and this and this. So now we are left with a purely blank screen. We are going to start right from the beginning. And we're going to start by adding some charts. There are two different ways that we can add charts to this platform. And the first way is going to file in the upper left-hand corner and clicking on new chart. And from here, we're going to get some different currency pairs. You're going to see that there aren't too many currency pairs. And we're going to address this in just a moment. But I want to show you first how this works. I'm going to click on one of these pairs, the Euro USD, and it will open up a new chart. And we'll notice the chart is just a window. It's not full screen. And you can make it full screen by clicking the little square icon in the upper right of the chart. And that will give you the full screen. Now from here, we can add a second chart. We'll go to File, New Chart. And we'll add the US dollar Japanese yen. So now we've got a second chart. And what we're going to notice is at the bottom is we've got some tabs down here. When you have one chart, you're not going to get these tabs. But when you have more than one chart, you will get the tabs that represent the different currency pairs. So I can switch from chart to chart by clicking on the different currency pairs, your USD or the US dollar Japanese yen. Now the chart that we're looking at is the default chart. It's the black background with these green bars. And we're going to change that in just a few minutes. But right now, I'm gonna show you how to make these charts the window that they were previously and a different way to open these charts. So if I double click on any one of these tabs, it is going to give us that chart window. Now, if you're going to add a lot of charts, it can take a long time going through the file and looking for the different currency pairs that you want. And right now, we don't have that many currency pairs. There are many more currency pairs than what we see. And the way to access all the different currency pairs and a quicker way to start opening a whole bunch of them is through this market watch window. So I'm gonna click this little icon, it's one that's just underneath insert, and that's gonna open the market watch window. And here we have three different currency pairs. So I want access to all the different currency pairs. So I'm going to right click anywhere in this area where the different currency pairs are. And I'm going to go down to show all. If I click show all, it will bring up all the different currency pairs. Now, in this case, we have a little extra as well. We've got some commodities and some indices and different platforms will have different variations of this. Some will have a lot more. Some will have a little bit less. This platform has mainly the different currency pairs and not a whole lot else, but that's all we're in it for right now. But there are other brokers that will give you much more than what is here. Now, this is the market watch window, and this is going to be an important window because it is a way that we can add charts very quickly and get a little extra information as well. Right now, at the very top of the market watch window, we can see the current platform time. Now, this is going to be important if you're using something like the market hours indicator where you have to know what time your platform is. This is not going to be your local time. This is the time of the broker. And there's no way to adjust this, unfortunately. It would be great if the broker time could relate to your time, but unfortunately, that's just not the way it is. If you want to add more charts to your platform, you can just drag and drop out of this list. They're a lot easier to find because they are much better organized. You can see all of the different currency pairs at a glance. So what you would do is when your chart looks like this and you've got each chart in a window, you have this gray space behind it. You want to drag and drop the different currencies into that gray space. If I drop it into the gray space, it'll give me a brand new chart for every currency pair that I'm dragging into this space. 
Now, if I made a mistake, I don't really want the Euro Australian dollar and I want to change that to the Euro pound, I can drag that into the chart itself. And what it will do is not add a new chart, but change the current chart. So this is how we can apply this from the market watch window. There's one more thing about the market watch window that is very handy. If I right click again, just like we did before and move down to spread, it'll give us an extra column. And this extra column is the spread for the different currency pairs. Now these spreads look huge. That's not exactly the spread. It is the spread in points, not actually pips. So when we're looking at the US dollar, Canadian dollar, the spread is 2.1 pips. These are variable spreads, so they do fluctuate a little bit. So the Australian dollar, US dollar is 0.6 pips. The Australian dollar, Japanese yen is 2.0 pips. When you're looking to place a trade on a certain currency pair, it is a good idea to take a look at the spread and see what it is. All right, so I'm going to close the market watch window. And if I double click on one of the tabs, it'll open this up. And then again, I can rearrange these as I see fit. There's one other way that we can change the currency pair of the chart that we're looking at. Let's say we go to that market watch window and we can't find the currency pair that we want. There is a way to tell the chart what the currency pair is that you're looking for. Now, this particular one is the Euro pound. Let's say I want this one to be the Euro Japanese yen. Where we have the dates across the bottom, we've got November 2, 4, 5, 8, and so on. In this left hand corner, I'm just going to double click where these dates are. And what this does is it opens up a symbols box and I can type in the actual symbol. So if I'm looking for the Euro Yen, I'll type in Euro JPY, no slashes, no nothing, just the actual letters and hit enter. And that is going to change that chart to that currency pair that I'm looking for. In the upper left hand corner, it'll give you the currency pair and the time frame that this particular chart is at. All right. So now the next thing we're going to do is take a look at the charts themselves. We're going to change the color. We're going to change the chart type, and we're going to look at some of the features of the charts themselves. So the first thing we're going to look at is the magnifying glass. We want to be able to zoom in or zoom out. And right now we are zoomed out quite a bit. We can't actually identify the different bars on this chart. They're pretty compressed. So we're going to zoom in and we've got two magnifying glasses at the top. There's a plus and a minus. And when you click the plus, it will magnify the chart so we can better see the different bars or candles on the chart. By clicking the minus, we'll zoom out. Now there's good use for this. I like to zoom out just so I can get a better overall perspective of the market, but I like to zoom in when I'm looking at the details. Now with this, what we're looking at is an American bar chart. Up at the top, next to the magnifying glasses, we've got a bar chart, which is what we're looking at. We have a candlestick chart, which is the one we're generally going to use. And we've got a line chart. The one that we use is the candlestick chart. This is the one that every trader I know uses. This is the one that I use. This is the one that we're going to use in this example. Now from here, we're going to change the color of the chart. We're going to change the color of the candles. And there's three different ways that you can get to that properties box. First is to right click anywhere on the chart and at the bottom click properties and that will give you the properties box. The next one is to simply press F8 on your keyboard. That is the shortcut key. And finally up at the top where it says charts, again, we'll get to the properties and from there, it'll give us the properties box. Now I'm going to completely change this chart. We're gonna change the candles, we're gonna change the background, we're gonna change the number colors. So the very first one is the background. You can see this window here is the preview window. And as you make the changes to the color of the chart, it is gonna show you what it looks like in the preview window. So with the background, I'm going to turn that to white. I want a white background for my charts. For the foreground, I want this to be black. The foreground is going to be the outline of the chart. It's going to be the numbers across the side and across the bottom. So if I go foreground and then choose black, you can see in the preview window how everything is changing. Now the bar up is the outline and the wicks of the bullish candles. So I'm going to make this one blue and the bar down is the outline and the wicks of the bearish candles. So we're going to make this one red. Now the bull candle is the fill of the bullish candles and I'm again going to make this blue and the bear candles are the fill of the bearish candles or the bodies of the bearish candles I'm going to make that red and from here we have pretty much everything we want now if I hit okay we're going to have that grid still on the chart I don't like to use the grid I find it clutters my charts so I'm going to get rid of it so I'm going to go back to that properties box by right clicking and choosing properties and under the commons tab 
I'm looking for show grid. It is currently checked. I'm going to uncheck it and then hit OK. And now that grid disappears and I get a nice clean chart. The next thing we're going to look at is the chart shift and the auto scroll. These are the two buttons next to this plus. So the chart shift is going to show you the end of the chart and where it's displayed. Right now it is clicked off. So the chart is displaying itself right at the very edge of the chart. If I click it, it will zip over a little bit and we can see at the top we've got this chart shift arrow we can actually change the position of this chart shift by grabbing this arrow and moving it so as we move this arrow we can modify where the end of the chart is going to be now if i click it off it'll go back to the right edge if i click it back on it'll go to wherever you've positioned that chart shift arrow the next one is the auto scroll. This one is set to on by default. And this is great if you're looking at multiple time frames. When you go from one time frame to the next time frame, you are going to want to keep this edge of the chart here. And the time frames are displayed by these little tiles underneath. So we've got one minute, five minute, 15 minute, 30 minute, one hour, four hour, daily, weekly, and monthly. So each candle is going to take that long to create. So we are currently on the one hour time frame, which means each one of these candles takes one hour to create. On the four hour time frame, each one of these candles takes four hours to create. So as I switch the time frames, we're going to see that this section of the chart always remains there, whether it's the daily or the five minute. We have this in the same position. Now, if I turn that off and I go to the four hour, turn off that auto scroll and then I hit a different time frame we're going to see that the chart has disappeared to the right now if that is the case you can just click the chart shift and that'll bring it back to where it wants to be or just simply click on the auto scroll and it will do it by itself now the auto scroll is great to turn off if you're doing some back testing if you want to do back testing and you can scroll back in time simply by clicking and dragging the chart you're not going to have any problems if that chart scroll is turned on every time there is a bit of movement in the market it'll pop back so i'll just turn this on so we can see this here so if i move this over and there's one fraction pip of market movement it is going to pop back to the beginning and if you're trying to do some back testing that is very inconvenient turn that off and you won't have that problem now with that being taken care of we're going to take a look at the drawing tools how to use and manipulate them so the first thing we're going to look at when it comes to our tools is our little toolbox at the top here. We've got our cursor, we've got crosshairs, and we've got these tools inside of this little box here. Now we can customize this. We can add and take away from this. So I'm going to do that before we actually look at the tools themselves. There's a couple of tools that I want, some that I don't want, and I'll show you how to customize this. So you'll right click anywhere in this set of tools and choose customize. And what you'll get is a list of things that you can use, can add to this toolbar and things that you have in this toolbar that you can take away. Now, this is what we have, and this is what we can add. There's a few things that I want to add, some things that I want to take away. For example, we've got this equidistant channel here. It's this one here. I don't want this, so I'm going to click it and just click on remove. And when I hit remove, you'll notice that it actually disappears from the toolbox itself. So I'll click remove and it will disappear. Now, with some of these other things, what I do want is a rectangle tool. I use this one quite a lot, so I'm going to add this. So I'll click this and then click insert, and that will put that into my toolbox. Now, I can move these tools around. I can just drag and drop them into different places, and you'll notice that when I do that, it actually moves it on this toolbox itself. So I think that's it for the customizing. I don't really need any more of these tools. I use the rectangle, I use the Fibonacci retracement, the text, the label, the arrows, the vertical line, the horizontal line, and the trend line. So with this, I'm good. So I'll just hit close. And you can do that with any of these. So if you wanna take a look and see what's in here, what you can use and what you want to customize by maybe removing some tools, you can do that. And every little box, starts with this set of horizontal lines and we can move these toolboxes around so you can position them as you like and from there you can customize your toolbox all right so the first tool we're going to look at is the trend line tool this is the angled line so i'm going to click this trend line tool and i'm going to click and drag and that is going to draw the trend line so i'll click and drag and we can draw the trend line so i'll let go of the tool and now i've got this trend line 
locked in place. I can't do anything with it now. It is secured. So I'm going to double click on the trend line and you'll notice that these nodes pop up. We've got these little square boxes at the end and in the middle here. Now, what happens to this trend line is it goes off indefinitely. It goes off forever. That is called Ray. We can turn that on which it is by default, or we can turn it off so that we have only the trend line that we draw. And what we're going to do is we're going to modify this trend line. We're going to turn off the ray. We're going to change the thickness. We're going to change the color. So with this being selected, I'm going to right click on the trend line and then choose trend line properties. From here, we have the commons tab. We can change the color of the trend line. We can change the type of trend line. It's a solid line, a dashed line or a dotted line. And we can change the thickness of the trend line. Now, when you have a trend line that is thicker than just the first one, you cannot use any of the line types. So if I have one that's a little bit thicker, this line type is no longer accessible. If I want to make a dashed line, I have to use the first setting and then I can use the dashed line. So let's go OK. All right, so we've got this trend line adjusted. I'm going to right click, go back into trend line properties. I'm going to make it solid. I'm going to make it thicker. I'll go back to red. That's the color that I like for trend lines. So under parameters, we see this ray checkbox. I'm going to uncheck it. And when I hit OK, we'll see that the trend line now is only as large as you draw. Now with it being selected, I can take one of the ends and move it. So I can readjust the trend line. And if I grab this center node, I can move the entire trend line. So if I want to position a trend line specifically, I grab one end and then the other end, and then I can position my trend line. Once I get my trend line where I want it, I'll double click on it again, and it will lock it in place. And now I won't be able to do anything with it until I double click it to select it again. Once I've double clicked it and selected it, I can just hit the delete key and that will delete it, or I can right click on it and choose delete. Now we're gonna go to the beginning. We have this vertical line tool. So I will put that on the chart and it'll just mark off whatever candle we place it on. Again, we want to double click and at the top and at the bottom, you'll see those nodes, right click on the line, vertical line properties. Again, you can do the exact same kind of changes with this as you could with the trend line. Once you've made the changes you like, double click, it locks it in place when those nodes disappear. Same thing with the horizontal line. We could draw the horizontal line again, once we've let go of the horizontal line, it's locked in place, double click to select, right click horizontal line properties. And then from here again, we can change the color and we can change the thickness and we can change its location. Once it's selected, we can grab it and drag it anywhere we like. If I wanna delete several lines at once, I will select several lines and then just hit delete. Once they're all selected and you hit the delete button on your keyboard, they'll all disappear. The next one now is my rectangle tool. This is the square that I like to use. Now I'd never like to use it this color. So I'm going to double click one of the corners or the very center of the box. If I double click somewhere that isn't the corner or the center, I won't be able to select it. So once I've got it selected, I'll right click on a node, rectangle properties. And then again, I'll go a lighter gray. I usually like a very light gray with this one. And then I'll hit okay. And while it's still selected, I can grab that center node and move the rectangle anywhere I like. And if I wanna adjust the sides, I will grab the corner nodes and I can adjust the size with the corner nodes. Once it's exactly drawn the way I like it, I will double click any of these nodes, whether it's the center node or the corner node, it will lock it in place. And now I can't accidentally mess around with it. Now that I've got essentially the drawing tools that I use out of the way, I'm going to show you the crosshair. Right next to the cursor, we've got this crosshair tool. I use this all the time. It's a really important tool. Let's get rid of the rectangle. Just click delete. Now the crosshair is something that I use to determine my stop loss. It gives you three different points of information. If I click and drag, it'll lock that crosshair into place. And then I get this little mini crosshair that is going to be located at that second place. And you'll see there are three sets of numbers. There is 20, 670, 129.886. The first number 20 is how many candles that I've moved from the original place. So it'll go 19, 18, 17, 16, and so on. The next number 670 is how many pips have I moved away from that original place. That is 67.0 pips. 
This is 51.9 pips. This is 53.1 pips. And finally, that last number is the price. So where I end up with my crosshair, we're looking at 129.753. So that is the price. Now I use this crosshair all the time to determine my stop loss. I need to know how big my stop loss is going to be. So let's say I'm looking at a short opportunity in here. I want the price to get below this line. My stop loss is going to go above this swing high. So I'll use these horizontal tools. Now I'm going to take my crosshair. And once I get that entry, I want to see where my stop loss is going to be. I know that my stop loss now is going to be that second number, 126. 0.2 pips. But it's important to remember that that second number is in pips, but it's missing a decimal point. It's 126.2. So you can activate your crosshair by clicking on the scrolly wheel on your mouse. You don't have to actually grab the crosshair itself. So I've got a mouse with a scrolly wheel on it. So if I click the scrolly wheel, you'll see the crosshair pops up and I can move it around until I click and then drag. And that is what locks it into place and gives me that information. We have a Fibonacci retracement tool. I like this tool. I use it quite a lot. We'll start at one side and go to the other. So if I'm looking at this Fibonacci level like this, now by default, it gives you these yellow lines. I'm going to change them to black. So I'll double click on this angled red line. I can't double click on the actual Fibonacci lines themselves, but the angled red line I can. Right click Fibo properties. And then from here, I will go under Fibble Levels and I'll change the yellow to whatever color I want. In this case, it'll be black. And then I'll hit OK. And that will change the Fibonacci lines to their colors. And by default, we've got the zero level, the 23.6 retracement, the 38.2, the 50, the 61.8, and the 100% levels. Once it is selected, you can move it around, it change its shape and position, double click to lock it into place, and now we can't move it anymore. So double click to select, right click, and then choose delete is how I would delete that. And with these lines, double click, double click, I'll select both of them and then just hit delete on my keyboard. It'll get rid of those lines. So the next two are a couple of different fonts. We can draw a text. And if I click on the chart with it, I want to modify my text. So it'll say text example, and then I'll change the color or the point size or the font and then hit OK. And that will give me the text. If I want it bigger, double click to select it, right click, text properties, 24, hit OK. And there we have the text example. Double click and it'll lock it into place. Now with this particular text, if I scroll with the chart, it will move with the chart. Now the next one is the label. I'll do the exact same thing. I'll click the label, click to the chart, and where it says label under text, I will go label example 24 i'll make it black and i'll hit okay now with that being there if i move the chart it will stay in place it is locked in place in relation to the chart window and the text itself is locked in place in relationship to the market itself and then finally we've got some arrows and you can use a check sign stop sign arrow up or down and then from here arrow up it'll give me this little tiny arrow by default Double click, select it, right click, arrow properties. You can change the color, the size. If I change this to a green arrow, I can make it bigger by choosing one of the thicker lines. And then under parameters, you have this arrow code. You can change some of these different codes. They're called wingdings. And you can actually find a wingding map online. It'll give you different codes for different shapes. So one that I like to use is 234. And we'll hit OK. And that'll give you a bigger kind of arrow. So if you use the wingdings, you can change this to virtually anything that the wingdings will show you. Once it's selected, I can move it around and place it where I want. And once it's placed, double click, it'll lock it into place. Now that we've got these drawing tools out of the way, we're going to take a look at applying and modifying some indicators. So we're going to delete these and we'll get right to the indicators. The great thing about adding and modifying indicators is if you can add and modify one, you can add and modify all of them. They're all basically the same thing. 
Now, there's three different ways to add an indicator to your chart. There's three different places that you can go to get an indicator. Now, the first one is this indicators list, this little icon here. You click this, it'll give you the option for the different indicators. Now, at the top of this drop down menu, we've got them in alphabetical order. But what happens is as you use the indicators, the most recent ones will be at the top and it'll fill up this way. Now, we have a set of trending indicators, oscillators, volumes some bill williams and custom indicators when you add an indicator to your charts and we're going to do that it'll be in this customs section so this is the first place that you can go to add an indicator the second one is insert and at the very top you'll see indicators and you get the exact same drop down menu and the third place is this navigator window if i click this navigator window it'll give me this set of folders and if i click on indicators again we have the same set of indicators just oriented a little different so let's go ahead and add a moving average so i'll go with this indicators list this is generally the way i do it so we'll go indicators and a moving average you'll find under the trend tab so i'll click on moving average and a properties box will pop up and from here you can change the properties of your moving average by default you've got a 14 period simple moving average applied to the close and it's red and just like all the other tools you can modify these the same way say i want a 21 period exponential moving average i'll keep it applied to the close i want this one to be blue and i want it a little bit thicker and then once i like what i've got i'll just hit okay and i have my moving average applied to the chart and it's really as simple as that now i can add as many moving averages as i want so i'll add a second one second moving average i'll do a 55 exponential moving average applied to close this time i'm going to make it a different color and i will hit okay there is a shift option as well and you can shift this forward a little bit one two three as many periods as you like but i like what i've got so i'll hit okay and now i've got two different moving averages on the chart and i can add as many as i like now in order to change a moving average once it is here simply double click on the moving average and the properties box will pop up and let's say I want to drop that down to 34 periods. We'll hit OK. And that's really as simple as it is. Uh, let's do the 21. I want to turn that one to a 13. I want to change the color to green. And we'll hit OK. And there you go. Now, if I want to get rid of a moving average, this is also very simple. Right click on the moving average and you can choose delete indicator. You also get the moving average properties. That brings up that same properties box. Uh, if you like to get rid of it, right click delete indicator and there it goes now you can add different kinds of indicators from here we'll go to oscillators and an oscillator will present itself underneath the window so let's add a relative strength index now by default again you've got a 14 period dodger blue let's make this one the regular blue i like the 14 period i want to thicken that rsi period line up so we'll go a little bit thicker and then we'll hit OK. And now we've got the RSI. If I want to modify the RSI, double click on the RSI itself. I want the RSI to fill up this window. So I'm going to take off the fixed maximum and minimums. I don't see these levels so clearly. So I'm going to go to levels and change the levels color to red. And I can change the levels themselves or add another one. Say I want to add a 50 level. Well, I'll just add a 50 level, double click inside to activate the field. Now, once I've got that 50 level, I'll just hit OK, and there we go. We've got the 50 level added. We've got our 70 and 30 levels, and it's really as simple as that. And you can do this with any indicator that you like. Another oscillator, let's put on the MACD, and we'll hit OK. And that is the default MACD. Double click on it. Colors, I'm going to turn the silver to blue. I'm going to thicken that up a little bit. I'm going to make the signal line solid and let's get okay so there is the rsi there is the macd if you want to delete an indicator just right click on the indicator and choose delete double click on the indicator to activate its properties or right click on the indicator and you get this properties option now there is another way to get to these indicators every once in a while you get an indicator that for some reason you can't click on and you'll need to delete it or alter it so what you can do is right click on the chart and choose indicators list and it will give you an indicators list pop-up box. And it'll show you the moving average, the relative strength index, the MACD, all the different indicators that we have. Choose one and then click edit. 
and the properties box for that indicator pops up you do the same modifications that you would do anyways and then once you're done you click ok and you are good to go i don't need this indicators list window anymore so i'll get rid of that now with these oscillators they appear underneath the chart itself and they appear in their own windows you can adjust the heights of these windows simply by clicking and dragging now you can't orient them once they're already here you can't put the macd above the rsi once they're already placed the way to do this unfortunately is to delete the rsi and then re-add it if i delete the rsi and then add it back again the rsi and you see in this window now we have the moving average the macd the rsi because we've recently used them they're up at top of the list so i will add the rsi again click ok and it will appear underneath the macd so whatever you've added last will be at the bottom and from here i have my indicators now we're going to add an indicator that is not currently on the platform now i have a couple indicators that i'm going to add so i'm going to do that just now and i'll scoot this over and here we have a couple of different indicators i've got a qti i've got a dots and i have a template as well we're going to install a brand new template we're going to install the dots indicator and a qti indicator these are two different indicator types. We have an EX4 and an MQL4. Once you install the MQL4 onto your platform, it will convert it into an EX4 file. So the way to install an indicator is when you have your chart open, click file in the upper left-hand corner and then choose open data folder. This is going to give you the windows to get into your folder. These are the different folders that we have as far as your platform is concerned. And this TPL is a template file folder and we have a templates file here. So I'm just going to take this ultra blue fusion template and drop it into this templates file folder. Now I've installed a template. Now in order to get to the indicators, I've got to go one deeper. So I'll go MQL4, I'll double click to open this file folder up. And here we can see we have the indicators file folder. I'm going to grab these both and drop them into the indicators file folder. And now they are inside of the platform. I'm going to close this window. Now, if I go to this indicators list and I go to custom, this is where I would find that indicator. And right now it is not there. In order for these indicators to appear, I have to close the platform down completely. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to click the X to close the platform. Now that it's closed, I'm going to reopen the platform. Now that it's reopened, if I go to this indicators list, I'm going to go onto custom. And at the bottom, we can see we've got the ultra blue dots and the ultra blue QTI indicators. And this brings me to the next thing is a template. We install the template onto the chart. And if I go to my templates tab, I'll see that I have an ultra blue fusion template and if i click on that this gives me an ultra blue fusion chart now we save templates so that we don't have to rebuild these systems over and over again so let's go back to the previous chart and i'm going to add some indicators and we're going to save that template so we've got this chart now we're going to add a couple of indicators let's add that relative strength index that rsi i want to click off the fixed and fixed so we'll hit okay now i'm going to add that macd that we had let's add that in there now i'm going to add a couple of moving averages so let's go 21 we'll make this one we'll keep this one green we'll add a 55 we'll make this one red so now we've got a very basic system now i want to save this as a template so i don't have to build this every time I'm going to go to my templates and you will see a selection called save template click this and we get this pop-up window that gives us the opportunity to save this template so we'll call it tester template and we'll save this so now when i go to this templates window we're going to see that we have the tester template in there so if i open up a new chart let's full screen this now if i open up a new chart euro usd we get the default chart from earlier in the video i'm going to add that tester template and click we have that automatically applied to this new chart we don't have to do anything else than just apply the template now if you're going to set up a lot of charts and you want the exact same system on all the charts 
there's an easy way to apply a new template to every chart without actually having to apply the template to your new charts. So what I'll do is take the template that I want and I'm going to go back to save template and I'm going to call this template default. And if I call it default, MetaTrader is going to apply this template to the new charts by default. So let's save this one as default. We'll click save. So what we'll do is open up a new chart that we don't have in here. So let's go with a pound chart because we see we don't have a pound chart in here. So we'll go file, new chart. Let's add a pound Japanese yen. And once I open this chart, remember the black and green default chart. Once I open this one up, we have this brand new chart with the default template added to it. So now that we've got our indicators, we know how to add, how to take away, how to manipulate our indicators, we are going to want to get into a trade. So we're gonna take a look at the different orders. We're gonna look at how to get into a trade and how to place our stop loss and take profit and how to get out of a trade or close a position. So we've got a clean chart and there's two ways to get into a trade. We can sell at market, that would be instant execution, or we could place a pending order. And that means we are going to get into a trade when the market reaches a certain price. So in this example, we could choose to sell when the price gets to this level or even buy when the price gets to this level. This would be a pending order, or we could get into the market right now and that would be instant execution. So for this example, we're going to place an instant order or a market order. So I've got this line, I'm going to put it up here because this is where I want my stop loss to be. And you can see where the price is at this line. So I'll have an exact idea where the price is. I'll place my take profit level down here. And again, I'll have a price based on the location of this line. So now what I'm gonna do is go to new order, click that new order button, and we get these options here, type, instant execution, or pending order. And again, we're looking for the instant execution in this one. And the volume, this is the lot size. When you have a volume of one, that is one lot. You can change the lot size to two decimal places. A volume of one is one lot size. A volume of 0.1 is a mini lot. And a volume of 0.1 zero one is a micro lot. Now it doesn't have to be one, it can be two, three, four, five, whatever the case is, but this is where you're gonna put your standard lot size. So let's place a trade for one lot and we're going to sell. This is gonna give us that instant execution. We're going to be in the trade immediately. So I'll click sell and we are in the trade. It tells us we're successfully in the trade. So I'll click okay. Now at the time of the trade, and I'll just open this up by double clicking. At the time of the trade, I could place the stop level and I could place the take profit target. I don't generally do this because it takes a little bit more time. I want to get into the trade, especially if it's an instant execution fairly quickly, but I do have my lines on the chart. So I'll show you how to place your stop loss and your take profit right on the chart. We didn't do this here. You can do this here when you are placing the trade, but we can also do it on the chart itself. So in order to do that, all you need to do is drag this entry level. And you can see where the mouse is, it says drag to modify. If I drag this entry level up, I have a stop loss. And if I look way over here to the left, it'll say SL, that means stop loss. And if I drag it down, it says TP, and that's the take profit level. So you can't get this wrong. If you drag it up, it'll automatically be a stop loss if you're in a sell trade. If you drag it down, it'll automatically be a take profit level if you're in a sell trade. So I'm gonna drag this up to the level that I want and I'll let go and I will get this window that pops up. This is a two-step process. And if I like what it is, I'll just click modify and it will place that stop loss. Now, if I don't want that two-step process to be the case, what I can do is go to tools, options, and I'm looking for the trade tab. So we've got all of these different options in here. And what I'll do is click on one click trading and I'll get this disclaimer. And I have to agree to this in order for this to work. So I'll accept these terms and conditions and hit okay. So now that I've done with that, I'll click okay. And I can drag my take profit down to a certain level. And then when I let go, it's instantly modified. Now, once these levels are placed, I can continue to modify them. They're not stuck in place. I can drag this take profit up or down, and I can do the same thing with the stop loss. Now that I've got this stop loss placed, I don't need this level here, so I'll delete that. Now, again, I can modify this trade 
as it goes. In order to get out of a trade, I just right click on that entry level and I can choose close. I'm going to show you a different way to do this as well. Now, if I choose close, it'll close the trade and we'll be finished. Now, another way to do this is through the terminal window. And we get a little bit more options through the terminal window. And that's what this is here. Just underneath this word charts, we've got that terminal window. We'll open this up and we'll have our trades that are in progress. We've got some different tabs. We're going to take a look at the trade tab. And this is the current trade. We are currently in this pound yen trade and it shows us the profit that we have on the trade. So this trade is one lot. So we're looking at approximately $10 per pip and it shows us the profit that we have on this trade. But we can change this to show us the pips that were up or down instead of the actual money value itself. So we can right click on this and under profit, we're going to find as points. So we'll click this and it will show us how far up or down we are in points. Now a point is a pip times 10. So what we're looking at is five pips, 5.1 pips. It's not 50 pips, it's 5.1, 5.0, 3.2, and so on, whatever this is changing to. So we are down 3.1 pips. Now I like to have it as my deposit currency, and that is the currency of the account. Now from here, I can right click on this anywhere and I can choose to close the order from here as well. But with this, I can do something else and I can close a partial position. And the way that I get to that is by double clicking on this trade. Now we could have two or three trades going, but uh, you want to make sure that you've got the one that you actually want to modify. So we'll double click on the one that we want to modify. You want to double click on the symbol or the size or the type or the time. If you double click on something after that, you're going to get that same window that pops up. We want a little bit different window here. So we're going to double click on the symbol. We're going to double click on the pound Japanese yen. And you can see that the window is a little bit different. Once we get this particular window with the yellow button on here, we can choose to close a partial position. We can choose to close half of this position or whatever it is. You determine the lot size you want to close. So if I close this at 0.5, I can choose to close this one now and I've closed half of the position. So now you can see what's remaining is the other 0.5. So I've closed half of the position and I have the other half of the position running. It doesn't have to be half, you can close whatever size you want and let the rest run. Now there's one more thing that I wanna show you. Under the account history tab, I placed a trade before this video so I could show you how to show a trade that you've taken. Now this is the trade that I took on this currency pair is the pound Japanese yen and we made $474 on it. And I want to show that particular trade. So I'm going to close this one. Don't need this trade anymore. So let's close this. And I want to show the trades that we did have. So I'll drag and drop this trade onto the chart. And it shows me the actual trade, it shows me the entry, it shows me where my stop loss was when the trade got closed. It shows me where the take profit was, and it shows me where I got out of that trade. You can drag and drop this onto a different currency pair. If I choose the Euro USD, for example, and I drag and drop this onto a Euro USD pair, it is going to change that chart to the pound Japanese yen. And one final thing before we go is when I go back to the trade window, let's put another position on. We'll go new order. We've got half a lot on. So yeah, let's sell that. So we've got this new position on. I'm going to drag my stop loss into place. I'm going to drag my take profit into place. And at this point, I want to add a trailing stop. So what I'll do is I'll right click on that currency pair that I want to trail and I'll choose trailing stop. Now we have some predetermined trailing stops, but these are generally pretty useless. This is 90 points, which is 9.0 pips. 95 points, which is 9.5 pips. You wanna make sure that your trailing stop is the proper number, because if you don't, your trailing stop is gonna to be too close. So let's say that I have a stop loss of 33.5 pips, which is 335 points. We see the crosshair, that second number is 33.5 or 335. Now I'm going to add 
that trailing stop. I want to trail my stop loss when I get to one to one. So I'm going to use custom and I'll type in 335. Once the market moves 335 points into profit or 33.5 pips, the trailing stop is going to move to break even and it will move behind the price by exactly 33.5 pips. And as that market continues and moves forward, the trailing stop will always follow it along. It's like a 33.5 pip long string, and it is going to bring that stop loss along with it. But when the price turns and moves towards the stop loss, that stop loss is gonna stay in place. And as long as that price is moving in your direction, it is going to pull that stop loss into profit for you. So now the stop loss is highlighted in yellow. It shows us that we have a trailing stop added to it. So the next thing we're going to look at now is how to take a screenshot of your charts and save that image. Taking a screenshot of your chart is really simple. Right click on the chart that you wanna save and then choose save as picture. By default, it's going to give you the active workspace and post image to MQL for chart service. We don't wanna do that. What we want is the active chart as is and uncheck this post image and click okay. It is gonna give you a default name, which you can name anything you like, but this is the Euro Yen, the four hour time frame. And if I'm good with that, I'll just click save. And what I get is an instant photo viewer pop-up, but it also saves this image as a PNG file to wherever your images will be saved. So for me, it saves to my desktop. So if I make this smaller, we have the image as a ping file, double click, open up the image, and what we get is an exact duplicate of the chart. This is a file that you can save to your computer, file that you can post anywhere you like. This is your active screenshot. It doesn't save anything else other than the screen, so you're not getting your desktop, you are only getting your charts. My name is Russ Horn, and thank you very much for taking the time to watch this MT4 tutorial. I hope now you can take full advantage of everything MT4 has to offer. Thanks again for watching, and I hope to see you in another video.